I have taught every grade level, I've taught high school, middle school, uh, elementary school, and there are a few through lines, uh, one of which is, is the kids can't read. The backdrop, Oakland, California. While it might be the setting for this particular film, it tells a story that hits home for many. Learning to read isn't always so simple. But when I first started teaching in Oakland, there were only two kids in my class of 35 who could read. Utah Valley University film professor and the director of The Right to Read, Jenny McKenzie, is no exception. Literacy is personal for me, Robin. I was diagnosed with dyslexia when I was 14 years old, but I got really, really lucky. I had a mom who was able to figure out what was going on with me and get me the resources that I needed to support me to become a really strong reader. And until making this film, it really wasn't clear to me that so many other kids who are diagnosed with learning disabilities or have challenges really don't have access to that kind of support and those kinds of resources. A, apple, a, a, a. Good job. B, banana, b, b, b. That lack of access and resources is a flagship focus of the film. How do you teach kids to read, and are we doing it right? Why does childhood illiteracy seem to affect some demographics more than others? The right to read explores it all, following the journey of a first grade teacher, an activist, and two families with struggling but improving readers. The film's executive producer, LeVar Burton, actor and longtime childhood literacy advocate. Students, I think, across the country have been given tools that is not allowing them to succeed and to learn how to read. Reading is something where we know the research, we have the evidence, and there is a very explicit formula and ways in way in which children need to learn to read. So Jenny, there are companies that are making money off of programs that are not actually teaching kids how to read. How did that happen? I think it happened because we have truly prioritized profits and politics over outcomes for our children. So it's shocking. And the issue is compound. According to the most recent National Assessment of Education Progress study on student achievement and literacy, 37% of America's children were reading below the basic level, a statistic that includes students of all racial and socioeconomic backgrounds. A deeper look at the numbers show 56% of black fourth graders, 50% of Hispanic fourth graders, and 57% of American Indian fourth graders are reading below the basic level. By the NAEP's definition, below basic, means a student cannot read. That study also found that 70% of fourth graders with disabilities are reading below basic levels, and 52% of fourth graders eligible for free and reduced price lunch are also reading below basic levels. The biggest challenge is there's a resource gap, right? So if you find families like mine when I was growing up and diagnosed with dyslexia and others, if kids are struggling, the parents get them a tutor. The parents sign them up for resources that are outside of school that they have to pay for. So this is really how we sort of see the growing disparity gap. What letter? It starts with my name. Oh, is, is this letter in your name? Yeah. What letter is it? I V Y. What letter is it? Y. Yeah. So yeah. many yeah. moments. Yeah behind the camera as we were filming that really just make you tear up because kids want to succeed. They want okay, to feel question? those aha oh, moments yes. where they get it and sort of that light yes. bulb goes on and they are excited because they have blended letters and they have figured out those phonics and they are going through and they are saying k at k at cat you know, they're figuring it out. I mean, it is just, it's a joyous experience to see those moments. All right, when I call your table, put your warm-up work in your cubby. Ginny says the solution to the childhood illiteracy crisis begins with policy and legislation, but the policy is only as good as the accountability and the implementation of that policy. Film has its own discussion guides for viewers, educators, and policymakers as a launching point for conversations focused on improving early childhood literacy, conversations that will hopefully create change. I mean, I make films because I think they're important topics and I hope that there will be a ripple effect and it will impact communities positively.